We're less than five months from Election Day, and there's a new poll out in New York suggesting that we could be looking at a landslide win here for not just Governor Cuomo, but pretty much every Democrat statewide here. Sienna, he's got Cuomo, uh, has Cuomo up, I should say, over Rob Astorino by 26 points. Cuomo actually increasing his lead since the last time Sienna polled back in April. The poll also shows Cuomo remains popular and that Astorino remains unknown and nearly 70% of voters don't even know him well enough to form a full opinion. Now, to try and raise his profile and his numbers last week, Astorino accused Cuomo of cheating on his property taxes, and today his focus was on ethics reform. Now, among the proposals from the Westchester County exec, term limits, shorter legislative session, and a new ethics commission, Cuomo was asked about Astorino's proposals and his tax accusations today. Well, Governor didn't really take the bait too much, laughing and saying, yeah, that's funny, good, I'm glad he did that, and he's free to do it, put forth a proposal. Um, listen, I understand 101 in the playbook is if you don't have the money, you don't have the name recognition, any press is good press here. But uh, if you were counseling Mr. Astorino, right, uh, where, where can he go here to get free press or do is there a way to do this is there a playbook yeah he's gonna naturally get press because he's the uh, he's the opposition to the incumbent governor so I, I don't think he's gonna lack the ability of getting press it's just too early in the game I mean the poll numbers first of all do we all trust polls even after the Eric Cantor loss you're supposed to be up 20 30 percent and, and then he suddenly loses but um, it's way too early. Uh, Astorino is going to have to continue to do what he's doing. He's putting out press releases all the time. He's trying to hit on a nerve, trying to capture something. Uh, it will happen that he will, he will gain some popularity outside of Westchester. Um, it's, it's just going to take a little bit of time, and that's it. We're so far away. We still have a lot of time. I'm curious, Dominic. Do you see parallels, I know different people, uh, height-wise and everything, with Pataki and Astorino in that, not just that they were running against Cuomo's, right? But... Pataki had no name recognition, right? And he was definitely outraised, and the registration was still heavily Democrat, more so today than then, but still definitely Democrat. Take me from then to now. Are there any parallels? Yes, and I remember it well. Uh, the parallels between George Pataki, the last Republican governor of New York State, and Rob Astorino is personality. One, both of them were very well liked across party lines. That's something they share in common, but a big difference. And I agree that it's early in the game, but guess what? The game is almost over. It was never going to be a game to begin with. So that's why I don't understand why Mr. Astorino ran, except for to raise his name recognition to run for governor down the road. Yes. Um, and, and that may very well be a possibility. But Governor Cuomo, the difference now, the sort of similarity, Pataki and Astorino, nice personalities, uh, both out of Westchester County when you think about it. But the difference with, with Andrew Cuomo's father, Mario, the disgust from voters was so high where there was the term ABC, anybody but Cuomo. And Pataki, as you well know, covering this, was able to tap into that and win. Astorino doesn't have ABC. This governor is riding high with presidential ambitions, and there is no race. But, Dominic, that's the very point, is what you brought up, is the, you know, anyone but Cuomo in that period of time, is that this is a two-cycle run for Astorino, and he's going to, when he runs the next time, He's hoping that he can capture that, and he will, and he will governor already, one day. And he he will, already governor will one have day. the name wreck. You don't want to start building it up uh, mm -hmm. in your I also in the think run. I, I, it's this is maybe inside baseball, but this governor's got every Republican state Republican scared to cross him. Um, so he's Literally. getting no party support here. Astorino is from folks, whether it be on the money side here or uh, in terms of being free uh, standard bearers to go after this governor. Now, speaking of Albany, Andrew. There was intrigue this week. This is the final week of the legislative session, and still, we got some key issues that are sitting on the table. And for me, what surprised me, everybody thinks in New York, um, Brad Dominic know this well as well, Blue State here, uh, gay marriage, head of the game, safe act in the gun control, but medical marijuana? How many states already have this stuff, and we're still talking about this? You talk about stuff like UFC? Um, we're one of the only states who won't sanction any fights here as well. Minimum wage? Again, minimum wage, you've got New York State here behind a lot of other states and still debating about whether to get there or not. I think the general public would be surprised 
on some social and economic issues. New York is not ahead of the curve. In fact, they're behind. 22 states have medical marijuana, including Connecticut and New Jersey, although they're having trouble implementing them. New York doesn't. Uh, 49 states allow mixed martial arts. New York is the only one that doesn't. And the minimum wage, there are already eight states that are at $8 an hour, or I'm sorry, that are above New York's right now, and five have already signed off on 1010 or higher going forward. So, yeah, that's, that's part of the hiccup there. You think it's the most progressive state in the country. We keep coming up with examples where yeah. it seems like the state's behind other states uh, when it comes to those issues. You know, you've had, and on the minimum wage, you have two different pushes at the same time. One is to raise it to 1010, the other is to allow municipalities like New York City to raise theirs to whatever they wanted to raise, to $13, as de Blasio has pushed for, or we, see, we saw Seattle at $15. They just made that approval as well. So uh, both up for debate this week in Albany. I don't expect either one of those to get passed, and frankly, I'm not sure if any of those three issues get through. Medical What's marijuana is being held up in the Senate, yeah. and MMA is being held up as well. Well, let's take medical marijuana for a second. What's the holdup? I mean, you know Albany better than I do in that, uh, really, we're, we're still debating. We're not talking about legalizing it like you got Cal uh, Colorado and Washington State. We're talking about medicinal marijuana. We have a Republican Senate, don't forget, and they're responsible for keeping Senate things like that this. That was a name only with a client. No, because you're else. being held. They, they need to make sure they have the conservatives on board. And for the conservatives on board, and they've been hammering on the Republicans over the gay marriage and some of the other liberal progressive things that they've partnered with the governor on. So understand that, you know, there's two things at play. The conservatives will completely abandon these Republicans completely and run primaries and do everything they can uh, if these Republicans don't hold true on certain aspects, and one of them is medical marijuana. Do, I do not expect, I mean, other than the governor's original plan of maybe putting out, you know, four hospitals in the state that would be dispensaries for something as a test, maybe that's something that'll be palatable to the Republicans, but beyond that, don't there, expect any movement. There's this irrational fear on medical marijuana. The big argument is, well, we don't want to turn into California, and I'm always, like, Last I checked, California was still the biggest economy in the country, hadn't fallen off into the sea just yet. Minimum wage, I understand the resistance, especially when the Republican nominee for governor's entire plank is the economic health of the state. Yeah. Raising the minimum wage could be used as an argument that would hurt the state. The one that makes the least amount of sense is MMA. I well, mean, it's it, not, it, well, has been one guy who's gotten in the way, right? It won't even let it come for a vote. It's center, a right? small handful. Well, you understand there's this one, the inside baseball on it. The inside baseball, it's a union issue. It's a union issue that emanates from, uh, from Nevada in Vegas about some of the issues that MMA had with the unions over there. And, um, and what's happened is the uh, assembly here has decided to continue to hold their up their end of the bargain and back that union in, in some way of protecting them and hold MMA hostage. You know, it's, you've got the votes. The yeah. votes are on. The, the, the assembly has the votes by far and wide. Uh, before we wrap, Dom, I want to ask you, uh, we went through the race in, in Cuomo's comfortably ahead. It goes for everybody. Uh, DiNapoli and Schneider. And what's funny is, could the coattails of Cuomo be helping those two even though those two can't stand the governor and vice versa. It, it, it's, it's kind of funny that, you know, we saw a skit that you know about that they did recently where DiNapoli and Snyder even poked some fun at. Certainly DiNapoli did. Um, they're not BFFs with the governor, but the governor's helping him here, isn't he? Because I thought at least John Cale is a credible candidate for AG, but Schneiderman's killing him. In the I, polls. I guess I guess the governor has some coattails, but the problem with Cahill, he doesn't have any personality. And that's never going to play statewide. He's a nice guy, and I'm sorry to say that, but he doesn't have the personality. Um, as far as the 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 uh, Democrat Snyderman and the uh, state controller, I mean, they're, they're running a credible campaign. I just see it as the Republicans don't have a bench in New York State. They don't have any candidates to come up and challenge these guys. And it's a two for one Democratic state. I mean, there's still Democrats so right. so badly outnumber Republicans that. You know, not only do they have a weak bench, but they don't they don't have the votes. I wish we could do a true senior yeah, but for this governor and said, who would you rather win, AG? Or who would you rather win, <laughs> controller? Would he pick the Republican? I, I, you know, I, I, I would never know, but I would love to know. That. Operationally, it would be a terrible situation for a governor to have a Republican, a Democratic governor to have a Republican controller. But understand this with the controller and with the attorney general. They're bases in New York City and the world of the unions and the world of, you know, the liberals and it's true. It is so strong. It carries them. Now, the governor, on the other hand, may not have that, uh, may not have as much strength in that area. Now, yeah. So it's, I Where guess it's complicated. 
where are those voters going to go? They, for yeah. no, those well, voters, they just won't. They could not vote. They're not going to go to Zephyr Teach Out. They're no not going to sit on their hands. No way, but they just may not vote. And the enthusiasm like say, for the other like two. say Zephyr Teach Out. I got to admit here. That is, the enthusiasm for the other two is probably more in New York yeah. City than for the governor. Okay. Um, if you think New York's got some challenges, trust me. You go across the river and they got some real math problems. They got a budget gap here approaching, if not in excess of $2 billion. Now the question is, what do they do about it? Will Christie reach a deal with the state Democrats to get New Jersey at least to the constitutionally mandated you know, budget deal and do pensioners get screwed in the process here? Or do they work out some cut plan? What are they gonna do? Well, today I was in Trenton and I spoke to state lawmakers to get their perspective. You'll hear that after this.